Greetings fellow Whovians and welcome to Timey Wimey Review. First off, happy Halloween everybody. I hope you're having a fun, safe Halloween. Uh, but most of all, wow, this is going to be exciting. Brand new Doctor Who has just premiered on BBC One and BBC America. I'm assuming it's a simulcast uh, broadcast this evening. And yeah, this is going to be my raw thoughts slash review of Doctor Who Flux Chapter 1. Halloween apocalypse. So it's going to be more sort of what we've learned from this episode and it's going to be a little bit uh, kind of like my review in my previous videos. I might probably go back um, in some point in the future and do like a full on review but I will still give it a TARDIS rating a little bit later in this video. So let's get stuck in and my thoughts on brand new episode of Doctor Who. This is a spoiler video. I will be going into all the spoilers from tonight's episode or quite a lot of spoilers from tonight's episode of Doctor Who Flux. So if you haven't watched the episode yet, please go watch it, then come back. And for everyone else, let's get stuck in. So chapter one of a six part um, story arc that we're going into for Doctor Who Flux season 13 of Doctor Who chapter one, the Halloween apocalypse. And um, boy, do we get a massive amount of introduction of characters in this first episode. So we obviously we have a new companion, Dan, Dan Lewis, uh, played by John Bishop. Uh, we've also have Vinda, who was on the observation platform. Platform Rose, I think it was called, Operator Platform Rose. He was out in deep space in this observation uh, platform. Uh, we'll get to him in a moment. Uh, we also have Diane, who is kind of a bit like Dan's love interest friend uh, in Liverpool. And a whole host of aliens too. So we have Calvinister, uh, who is, uh, well, what everyone was saying was a space dog. Uh, looked a bit like Chewbacca from Star Wars. No, he wasn't. He was a very enjoyable character, actually, I thought. I um, thought Craig Ells did a great job there. Corey fans would recognise uh, that, that name. And, yeah, he was an enjoyable character. He was pretty much... Uh, him and his race was very much um, there to, pretty, to, to take all the humans off Earth because they know of this thing called the Flux. And the Flux is this big swarming entity in deep space coming to every sort of planet in the known universe and just swallowing them up whole uh you know, you, you cannot escape from it um they 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 have this master plan of hopefully protecting earth from the flux we had the appearance of the Weeping Angels, exactly what you need on a Halloween night. They were very menacing and very scary as usual. And also the, the Sontarans, they made an appearance as well, sort of setting up for uh, the chapter two uh, that we're going to get next Sunday. Great to see Dan Starkey back as one of the Sontarans. I don't know whether we're going to see him next week as well, but a great cameo nonetheless. The two most mysterious characters for me in this first chapter was uh, the Swarm. Uh, they were pretty much the, the, the villain of the piece. Um, he's going to be around for quite some time. He's pretty much this alien race that uh, can absorb life forms of uh, the life force, sorry, of humans and I imagine aliens as well. And uh, he seems to know the Doctor um, from, from her past. Uh, the Doctor doesn't recognise uh, the Swarm at all. So uh, big sort of mystery who he is. And uh, put it in the comments below if you know any ideas, any theories of who the Swarm could be. You know, it's kind of a bit like the mystery of the Valyard from Trial of the Time Lord. Uh, and the other mystery uh, character is Claire. Uh, I'm assuming a human. Uh, she meets up with the Doctor and she seemingly knows the Doctor, but the Doctor doesn't know her. And it was interesting that she said the line, taking the long way round. Uh, very bit like sort of River Song, uh, something that we've seen quite a few times in Doctor Who. So, yeah, she was very uh, mysterious and she got got by the Weeping Angel. So whether that sort of is the reasoning behind um, why, she, why she knows the Doctor and not the other way around. 
Only time can tell. So let's talk about the characters a little bit more depth. Uh, starting off with Yaz and the Doctor. And you, you can tell that there has been a, a, a remarkable sort of shift in their sort of character development. I would love to see Big Finish Audios sort of take those chapters uh, with the adventures of Yaz and the Doctor. Um, Yaz seems to be a bit more sort of questioning the Doctor, sort of, you know, a bit more sort of confident in challenging the Doctor. So it was nice to see that sort of upgrade for, for Mandip because uh, we, we do need that. Uh, I, I think we can all honestly say that the, the some of the flaws from the previous two seasons under Chris Chibnall were the characters, the, the companions were a little bit wasted uh, to, to say the least. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad that we kind of got just one sort of pivotal character and then we can sort of introduce Dan sort of ease him into into the series so it's good to sort of see that dynamic between Yaz and the Doctor and speaking of which let's talk about the Doctor herself because I've really enjoyed Jodie's performance in this one tonight I think it's probably one of her best ones to date I like that the, the Doctor is more standoffish that's what I want I want the mystery back of the you know She's been a bit more humanised, happy-go-lucky. Uh, but ever since what happened in The Timeless Children uh, and that big reveal, it I feel like she's taken Yaz on a journey, but sort of to uh, to the Doctor's own game. She's basically looking for the division. So uh, she has this conversation with uh, Carl Vinister uh, and asking, who was the division? You used to work for them. Where are they? Where can I see them? So I'm I'm really happy that we're going into that part of the Timeless Children storyline of who was the division, the these mystery uh, secret service like people of Gallifrey. Uh, like I said in my Timeless Children review, very much like uh, remind me of Star Trek in those sort of secret services that they have like Section 31, Tal Shiar, Obsidian, Obsidian Order. So I'm glad that we're sort of taking at least that element from the Timeless Ch Children storyline and putting it into Doctor Who Flux. And what about our new companion, Dan, John Bishop? It's a bit early days, I think, to be fair. Um, the character of Dan is like, oh, isn't he nice? You know, he, uh, I don't think he's got a job. He's in this episode, he's pretending to be a, a tour guide in this exhibition, uh, only to be told by Diane that you don't work here anymore. You know, you've got to stop doing this because you are going to get banned from, from the exhibitions uh, and the exhibits. And you can tell that he helps out. He helps out a local food bank, um, donating food for everyone else, but not for himself. And he's pretty much broke. Uh, although he can afford a Liverpool shirt, which is interesting. Um, so, yeah, he's got nothing to eat in the house. And he got that, oh, what a nice guy. But it's a bit early days, which is... To, to be honest, it's fine. Uh, you know, let's let's break him in gently. You know, uh, there's going to be so much pressure on these characters now. So it was quite refreshing to sort of have him sort of ease into uh, this first episode. And hopefully we'll see more of his character grow in the following five episodes and the three specials next year. Same goes for Vinder, played by Jacob Anderson. He, he only had like a small uh, appearance in this episode. Um, basically, he was, he was some kind of like space operator, sort of just to, just to observe what's happening in that part of space. And then he sees the flux and uh, eating all these all these planets and he was getting the heck out of there and I don't blame him um but again early days for Vinda let's see what happens uh, again in the remaining episodes on the whole I really did enjoy this first chapter and I don't I think it's a bit early days to see if it's like a just standalone episode because it is just one I don't think that's what they're going for, really, which is absolutely fine. So, yeah, for this first chapter, really enjoyed it. It was a good sort of solid introduction into what we're going to go through with the flux. 
mysteries with the swarm and claire i love the dynamic of the doctor and yaz it reminded me of the sixth doctor and perry after uh season 22 going into season 23 with travel the time lord so again it was it kind of reminded me of that like the little reference of nitro 9 from the doctor earlier in this episode really really good uh, i like that the doctor uh just like ace can't quite handle <laughs> the explosives that well so I, I quite like that little nod there but um yeah it, it brought some definitely some excitement into doctor who and the the cliffhanger at the end uh, really enjoyed that you know everyone it, it, the stakes were already raised so that that was a really good way to end the chapter we've got a lot of mystery a lot of um a lot of suspense going through and some great special effects again i've always praised the high quality of special effects from the chris chibnall jody whittaker era of doctor who so i'm going to give chapter one the halloween apocalypse a tardis rating of seven out of ten really fun enjoyable episode left me wanting more can't wait for chapter two next week let me know in the comments below your thoughts to Doctor Who Flux, Chapter 1, The Halloween Apocalypse. Did you enjoy this episode? Are you excited for Chapter 2? What's your theories on the swarm or the flux or what other things did you pick up in this episode? Uh, it is a spoiler episode, so, you know, let's be a little bit kind in the comments, but let's have a good old chin wag. Uh, let's get some uh, fan, fan theories out there. Every Sunday night into Monday morning will be my raw thoughts slash review of Doctor Who Flux. And every throwback Thursday, I'll be doing a classic Doctor Who review. So next time on Time Rhyme Review, a little bit later on this week, I will be reviewing the fifth Doctor story, Castro Valva. Until next time, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed the review. Please like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel, and be sure to check out my other videos on the Time Wine Review YouTube channel. But as the good doctor once said, any questions? No? See you later.